Hello everyone and welcome to Arkansas Live. Whether you're watching in the morning or in the evening, we welcome you. And I believe the Holy Spirit is going to give you revelation knowledge so you can conduct your life more accurately and with more anointing. While the art of war may sound strange for a Christian ministry or a Christian television station, I think you'll see that this analysis of the art of war based on scripture will help you understand the times and what to do uh, in whatever situation you're facing. So stay tuned. Arkansas Live starts right now. <clears throat> you know, whether you're facing a sickness or a disease, financial difficulty, mental challenges, whether you're facing things in the culture, whether you're facing torment or fear, these lessons will help you know who your enemy is and how to overcome uh, any situation that you're facing. Now, I've been giving you uh, an introduction uh, to the art of war. It's uh, written by Sun Tzu, who, is, who was a Chinese military strategist. The book was written over 2,000 years ago. It's been used by every culture, uh, every country. I attended the U.S. Army War College uh, for a strategic leadership seminar several years ago. I was invited because of a, I was a CEO of a television network. They didn't know I was a preacher or pastor at the time. But I learned much from them, and they learned from us because they asked us to share how we ran uh, our uh, companies. And then every day after we came off of the battlefield, Gettysburg, which is where the war, the war college is located, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, we studied the Battle of Gettysburg. And then after we came out of the war rooms, uh, then we had what they call, what the Army calls, after action review, AAR. And you had to explain why you made the maneuvers you made, what you did, what the strategy was. Strategy and tactics are different. Strategy is what do you hope to accomplish. Tactic is how you get from A to B. I always thought it was the opposite. I always thought strategy was A, point A, point B, point C. But that's tactic. Strategy. Of course, in the Navy, aboard ship, uh, we would, uh, we would, uh, direct our course uh, to different uh, uh, points on the compass to distract the enemy, avoid submarines, uh, uh, torpedoes, etc. Uh, we would tack in different directions. We would zigzag. We would do all these things. I always thought that was strategy, but that's, that's not strategy. That's tactics. So we learned that at the World College. We also learned uh, what Sun Tzu called the art of war. And I emphasize the art. Art is a skill. It's something learned. It's something experienced. And I gave you a little history. Uh, I served in the Navy for a total of six years, two years at sea on two different ships. And uh, on the destroyer, uh, DD-847, the Robert L. Wilson, we were gunfire support for the carrier Wasp group down at the Bay of Pigs in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. And we were in our gun mounts, eight hours on. We were uh, gun fire support. The Marines were dug in. Castro and Khrushchev were trying to bring uh, a missile close enough. They were using Guantanamo Bay as their launching uh, place so that they could attack America uh, just 90 miles from Florida, et cetera. And we were sitting there watching them uh, battle it out. We thank God, because we weren't Christians, we were 20 years old and stupid and not afraid of anything, but yet we thank God now that our commander-in-chief, John F. Kennedy, had served in the military, served in the Navy, in the Navy, and he knew as commander-in-chief what to do, and he did it. He, he, let me read this to you because he did exic exactly this. The art of knowing the enemy as you know yourself presents war as a battle of wills more than the battle of weapons. And military strategists have said that the Bay of Pigs 
was the closest the U.S. had ever gotten to nuclear warfare. Well, we were there. We saw what the president of the United States, our commander-in-chief, we saw what he did. And he did exactly, I don't know whether JFK ever went to the war college, but he did exactly what Sun Tzu said in The Art of War. It was a battle of wills. And he backed Castro and Khrushchev down uh, by his, how would you say, maneuvering. There was not a shot fired. I mean, we were firing all the time. We were firing at uh, targets. We were practicing. We were uh, shooting. Our, our destroyer could shoot torpedoes because we were an anti-submarine helicopter, dash unit, destroyer, anti-submarine helicopter. We had drone helicopters. This was back in the 60s. We had drone helicopters that carried torpedoes. We could fly them over an area and release the torpedoes and they'd hit the water and they'd hit a submarine or a, a land target. So we had sophisticated weapons as sophisticated as it could be in the 60s. Now we have a nuclear submarine on the way to the Mediterranean and we have <laughs> two carrier groups uh, headed over there too, just in case Iran thinks that they can outmaneuver us. Now, this is all, this is all according to uh, military uh, history and military maneuvers. And let, let me go on from here because I want to show you from Scripture how war is deception. It's not just firing bullets and guns and killing people. Uh, listen to this. The generals according to those at the War College, the purpose of war was not the destruction of the enemy. Now think about that, because I had to think about it too. The purpose of war was not the destruction of the enemy. Now if you know the scriptures, you know that our enemy, Satan, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits, you know that, the, that our enemy has already been defeated you might say that we are in the process of demonstrating Satan's defeat. So don't get all scared and fearful. Don't get caught up in conspiracy theories. Stay with the Word. The Word of God, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. He will teach you and show you things to come. Now, all the secular media can do is to tell you what has already happened, but the Holy Spirit can tell you before it happens. He can show you what to do, how to pray, how to believe, how to act, what to do. So listen to this. The objective was to subdue enemy forces while leaving them intact. Now, if you ever saw the movie made about George Patton, George Patton was a graduate of the War College, and he was a general... Uh, actually, he served in World War I, and he developed some of the tanks. He was a tank commander. He was a tank man. He developed some of the tanks that we used in World War II. He was only 65 years old or so about that age when World War II was over. And so he had lived through two world wars, and he, he subdued enemy forces while leaving them intact. He taught the third army, one of his commands, how to run or jog with their weapons one mile in 30 minutes. And he said, if you can teach your men not to dig foxholes, he said, you dig your foxhole, you dig your grave. You never let the enemy know where you are. You keep firing your weapons and you keep running. That way the enemy never knows where you are. And Patton used a lot of psychological warfare, if you want to call it that. He knew what the enemy would do. He had studied the enemy. Sun Tzu's book, The Art of War, says if you know your enemy and you know yourself, you'll win every battle. Now let's go on reading because I want to get down to my scripture. The generals were really after the enemy's mind. The generals were after the enemy's mind. They distracted their opponents. 
And they came to the premise. Now listen to this, underline it if you're taking notes. All warfare is based on deception. All warfare is based on deception. Or you could say it this way. All warfare is based in deception. Now, you cannot believe the secular media. You can't even believe. <laughs> I, I, I don't say this critically uh, or dishonorably. You can't even believe our, our political base, our, our military uh, strategies. You, can, you can't even believe what I call wink em, blink em, and nod. You can't even believe what they say. They don't really know. They're not on top of their game. They're manipulated and controlled politically to say what is most beneficial to those that are in charge. So you cannot believe them. You have to know what the Word of God says. Go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, we read a lot. It is what is commonly called the Mount Olive Discourse, the Olivet Discourse. Jesus is teaching His disciples. Now keep in mind, we're taking these words that He has taught to His disciples Jewish disciples because there's a whole lot in Matthew 24 that does not relate to the church at all because the church had never, it had not existed yet. And the disciples didn't know anything about the church. They didn't know anything about a rapture. A rapture wasn't taught until the apostle Paul comes on the scene in 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. So these, these disciples were looking for Jesus's coming, literal coming. We today, the church knows that this is referring to the second coming of Christ. Jesus has already come the first time. But the second coming is when he comes back and he sets up his kingdom. Now, I emphasize this over and over again because there's a false teaching out there called kingdom now that we are going to subdue all the kingdoms of the earth and then bring Jesus back. And Jesus cannot come back and return to earth and set up his kingdom until we've subdued all the kingdoms, political kingdom, economic kingdom, athletic kingdom, all the kingdoms that we look at today. That is false teaching. That is not biblical. Yes, we're to go in every man's world. Yes, we're to conquer. Yes, we're to overcome. We could, we, we could minister to every man's world. But you're not going to bring Jesus back. Jesus' second coming is a set time. Now, it, it's to our advantage in, for us to enter into every man's world and subdue kingdoms. But we are not going to subdue kingdoms to the point of bringing Jesus back. Jesus will come back when it's time, the second coming, and he will set up his kingdom. I'm going to move on from there because I've dealt with that so many times. That's an erroneous uh, doctrine, but it's resurfacing. A lot of people are, are believing in that. Okay, Jesus told his disciples, as they asked him, when will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age or the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said, take heed that no man deceive you. Boy, I've got that highlighted. I've got it marked in red. I've got quotation marks around it. Take heed that no man deceive you. No man deceive you. Listen to this. All warfare is based in deception. And that's what Jesus said, Matthew 24, 4 through 8. All warfare is based in deception. So, if you are contemplating or you are in or you sense or you know that you're in warfare, you're combating forces of the enemy, you've got to know the truth. You've got to know what the Bible says. You have to know that you know that you know that you've been given all power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Jesus did that for you. In Luke 10, 15 through 17, 
Jesus said to his disciples, you're his disciple. He said, take note. I have overcome the enemy and I now give you the power and authority. You have the power and authority. And I might add responsibility over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. He goes on. Take heed that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ or I am from Christ and shall deceive many. Well, in our, you know, weak need Christian church today, anybody that comes on the scene and says, I am from the Lord, the Lord sent me, thus saith the Lord, they prophesy in his name, they represent his name, the weak need church, gullible church, how would I say, milk toast, watered down church, church light, they'll accept anybody in anything. You know, it says over in the epistles, 1 John chapter 4, one way to test is to test the spirits and ask them, and I've done this, ask the, ask, ask the Lord to show you and test the spirits uh, if they have come in Christ, if they are of the Spirit of God. When I pastored my first church, I asked a guy, he came to our church and he, he was acting strange and bizarre and he wanted to say something and I, I wouldn't let him because I, didn't, I, I discerned that he was not of God. He was not sent there by God for any reason. He was sent there by the devil to deceive, to distract. And uh, the Bible says, test the spirits to see if they're of God. Uh, and, and you do that by asking him, do you, do you believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? Well, you have to understand that, rightly divide the scripture. That means, do you believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh? Are you born again? Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And, and this, these spirits, they believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. They know he did. He defeated them. <laughs> so this guy, I, I asked him these questions. He said, you want me to, you want to hear me speak in tongues? And he just started speaking gibberish is all it was. There was no anointing. In fact, there was an eerie, evil feeling and sense around him. It was so weird that some of the people, some of the ushers that were there standing with me, they knew that was not God. They knew that was a, a familiar spirit. They knew that was false. But if you don't know the word and you don't have the gift of discerning of spirits operating in your life, you won't know the good from the evil, even though the evil dresses up like the good and they say all the right things, but it's not correct. And Jesus said, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and shall deceive many. And you shall hear. Now, here's where we are right now. You can even watch this. You can even hear some of these uh, journalists. You can even hear, him use, hear them use this terminology. And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. I heard one just the other day. He was talking about wars and rumors of wars because we hear about that almost every day. Jesus said that. Jesus said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. That ought to awaken you and stimulate you to realize that's where we are right now in time. We're at the Mount of Olives discourse where Jesus said, take heed, no man deceive you. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But listen to what else he said. See that you be not troubled. No, you don't have to, to log on to patriot.com and order 25 years of powdered eggs. See that you be not troubled. Be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. Boy, this is, this is a hard saying. All these things must come to pass. They have to come to pass. They will come to pass. 
I don't care if you call yourself a faith giant, faith giant. You can't stop these things from coming to pass. Because I know when the pandemic hit in 2020, I was out walking in my backyard and I was walking back and forth, back and forth. I said, Lord, what is this? Why can't we stop this? We're people of faith. We know we have authority in the name of Jesus. Why can't we speak to this pandemic, this COVID-19? Why can't we speak to this pestilence? Why can't we stop it? And the Lord spoke to me and said, go back and read Matthew 24 and uh, read verse 6 through 8. So I did. And it said, you will hear of wars, rumors of war, see that you be not troubled. All these things must come to pass. But, listen, the end is not yet. The end of the age is not yet. This is not the end. Okay? I know people are writing books. This, this is the end, the end time. What do we do at the end? What do we do next? What do we do at the end? This is not the end. The end is not yet. Nation will arise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. That's happening. Famine, pestilences, that was COVID-19, 2020. And earthquakes in diverse places. Have you ever seen so many storms, earthquakes, tremors, volcanoes erupting? Hurricane, have you ever seen so much of that? Romans 8, 22, the whole earth, the whole creation groaneth and travaileth until now. Jesus said this, this would happen. Everything is right on time, according to his word. Then he says in verse 8, all these are the beginnings of sorrows. The metaphor of a woman in travail. Before the child is born, there are birth pangs. There are birth pangs. There's pain that's going on. Uh, go with me over to uh, Romans chapter 8 and read. And I, I taught on this just, I think, last week. Romans chapter 8 and look at verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. The whole creation is in pain. It's, it's, like, it's like the metaphor of a woman giving birth. She's having labor pains. The earth is having the same pains. I hate to see the fires, the floods, the tornadoes, the destruction. My heart goes out to those people. My heart goes out to... Those, the people in California that have, have had half their state almost burn up. I mean, California's on fire. And then the other day, they had another earthquake in Los Angeles. My heart goes out to them. But they don't have a clue. They don't know what's going on. They think it's climate change. <laughs> it used to be global warming until that hoax didn't fly. You remember when the government tried to get us on the metric system People didn't go for it, so they went back to the system that we're on now in feet and inches and pounds and ounces. But they tried to get us on the metric system. They tried to get us to believe global warming. Nobody bought it. So they just changed the name of it. Now it's climate change. And everything is blamed on climate change. It has nothing to do with climate change. We've had climate change for <laughs> the whole human race. We've had climate change for generations and generations. In fact, John Coleman, the founder of the Weather Channel, debunks climate change and himself says it's a hoax. He says all in the world the government is doing is paying scientists to support climate change so they can be funded. Well, if your whole life and everything depends on being funded by the government, you're going to keep telling the government what they want to hear. But everything is not blamed on climate change. The culprit is sin, S-I-N. Sin is what is causing the earth to travail. It's the sin that happened in the Garden of Eden. It's the sin that came into the human race. 
It's the sin that is affecting the earth and all that. Uh, it's the beginning of sorrows. Now, the beginning of sorrows actually is referring to the prelude before the tribulation period. Now, I know there are volumes and there are people and there are preachers and so forth that still cannot agree on the timeline. Uh, nobody knows, of course, the scripture confirms, you, nobody knows this, the rapture, the time of the rapture. It's a secret. It's a, you know, it's, even Jesus doesn't know. The rapture is the removing of the church, the catching away of the church before the tribulation period. I have one minister acquaintance. I, I knew him. I visited with him over the years. He's since in, in heaven. He absolutely, he was right on just about everything, but he absolutely refused to believe in a rapture. And he had a call-in program where people would call in and ask him, why do you refuse to acknowledge the rapture of the church? And he just finally said one day out of frustration, he says, because it's nonsense. I was sitting there watching him. I heard it. I thought, how in the world can, can he say that? Well, now his predecessors disagree. They now believe in a rapture. Well, he's in heaven. Yeah. And, you know, but there are people that have strong feelings about it. But nobody knows the timeline. Nobody knows when the rapture is going to take place. And there are those that believe the rapture and the World War III are going to take place the same day, 24-hour period. Some say it'll be a week, a month, a year. Nobody knows the timeline. But after the rapture takes place, did you see the report? I don't know if you did or not. Uh, the other day, the secular news, and I'm running out of time, was talking about the decrease, the demise of the earthly population, that there are less people on the earth now. And in the next 30 years, uh, we'll probably have half as many people on planet earth. What are we going to do? Well, let me tell you something, Bubba. After the rapture of the church, you're going to lose a whole lot of people. Uh, they're going to be gone. Okay, we'll stop there for today. Uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow. Be sure and join me. And remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas. And wherever you're in the world, you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. Or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on X at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.